So in this video, I want to talk about the cells of the adaptive immune system, which are the T and the B cells. So these cells are lymphocytes. What does it tell us? They are derived from the lymphoid lineage. And this is in contrast to most of the innate immune cells, which are derived from the myelid lineage, at least most of them. So how do they see stuff? They see stuff, they recognize stuff via the so-called T cell receptor on the T cells, TCR, and B cell receptor on the B cells, BCR. So this T cell receptor and B cell receptor are the molecules on the surface of a T or B cell that functions as the eye of the cell. Without these receptors, T and B cells would be flying blind with no sense what's going on. So the special thing about these receptors is that they are antigen specific. So the T and B cells, these are the specialists. They recognize very specific, unique antigens. So this is now in big contrast to the cells of the innate immune system. We learned that they recognize stuff via the so-called pattern recognition receptors, PRRs. So they recognize patterns. They can tell this is a virus, this is a bacteria, but they cannot tell us any specifics. However, T and B cells, via the T cell receptor and B cell receptor, they can really tell us now specifics because they recognize one very specific, unique antigen. So next I want to discuss a couple of pr general principles of this T cell and B cell receptors. So first of all, I want to say that all receptors on one single T or B cell have the same specificity for one antigen. And we call this principle clonality, or these receptors are clonal. The next important characteristic is that the T cell receptors and the B cell receptors have a very, very high diversity. So what you're going to learn is when we make T or B cell receptor, that includes a process called DNA rearrangement. So as the name already implies, DNA is randomly rearranged to make this receptor. So that's what gives us this huge diversity. And we need this huge diversity because you need to think about the fact that your immune system has to recognize molecules that has never been seen before. Therefore, we must generate receptors with a tremendous diversity. So this is a principle of diversity, which is very characteristic for T and B cell receptors. And the other characteristic is we need to have a so-called tolerance mechanism. You can imagine if we generate these T and B cell receptors in a very random manner with this DNA rearrangement. Just by chance, there will be a T cell receptor or B cell receptor generated that will recognize self molecules, so our self. And that's a problem because we don't want to react against self molecules. So there has to be a mechanism to get rid of these cells that are self-reactive, and this is called tolerance. We should also not forget that those principles I just talked about, clonality, diversity, and tolerance, are not present in innate immune cells. Innate immune cells recognize pathogens via the pattern recognition receptors. We have a couple of families. We have TLRs, NLRs, RLRs. But every macrophage has a set of pattern recognition receptors. They're not all the same receptors on the macrophage. So no clonality. Also, the diversity is very limited. We have a whole bunch of pattern recognition receptors but we are never going to have the diversity that a T cell or B cell has through this random DNA rearrangement. Also, the pattern recognition receptors have evolved in a way that they specifically recognize pathogens and they don't recognize self molecules. So there's no need to get rid of any self reactive cells. So we also do not have tolerance mechanisms. A couple of other characteristics of the T and B cell. They all originate in the bone marrow, and the T cells get trained and educated in the thymus. That's where the T comes from, T from thymus. And the B cells get trained and educated in the bone marrow, B for bone marrow. So let's have a closer look at the T and the B cells, and let's start talk about the T cells. So I want to give the T cell the slogan, 
help or kill. So tea cells come in two flavors, either CD4 or CD8 T cell. When we have a look at such a T cell, we see that it has a T cell receptor, the TCR, and this is a receptor that is recognizing antigens, and we just talked about that. And every T cell also has a core receptor, which is very important for the activation process. And it is either CD4 or CD8. So when a T cell is just hanging out in the lymph node, it is a so-called naive T cell. And this naive T cell doesn't have any effector function. So it's not going to actively participate in the removal of the pathogen. It's just hanging out in the lymph node and it's waiting till it's activated. Once it is activated and it recognizes its specific antigen, it undergoes a process that we call clonal expansion, which includes proliferation and differentiation in a so-called effector cell. So it's now very important to realize that this new effector T cell that is generated in this process is a completely different cell. It has a completely different set of genes, which I have now shown here, with this nucleus in a different color. So once this clonal expansion has happened, we have generated an effector T cell. And this is now the T cell that has, as the name already implies, effector functions that can do stuff. And the CD4, naive CD4 T cell, is going to generate a so-called T helper cell. And the naive CD8 T cell is going to differentiate in a T killer cell. And the effector functions are obvious from the na name. So the T helper cell, we can say it's a cell that helps other cells to do a better job. And the T killer cell, as the name already implies, is a cell that can kill cells. For example, cells that are infected by a virus. So now a couple of other specific characteristics for the T cell. So the T cell doesn't take just any antigen. So you can think about it, it's a kind of an arrogant or a picky cell. So if you want to see the antigen as a present, the present that you give the T cell needs to be packed in a very specific manner. You cannot just throw stuff towards the T cell. You need to package it and deliver it in a very specific way. And the way the T cell wants to have antigen presented is via so-called MHC molecules. So that's the way how you want to present antigen to the T cell via MHC. So again, the T cell is kind of picky. It wants the antigen to be presented in a very specific way, and it also only wants to see peptides to be presented. So next, let's have a closer look at the B cells. I want to give the B cell the slogan, spit antibodies. That's really the job of the B cell. So in a similar manner, a B cell that is just hanging out in the lymph node is not active, actively participating in the process of removal of the pathogen. It doesn't have any effector function. So the B cell has on its surface a B cell receptor. And this is nothing else than a membrane-bound antibody. So we have here this membrane-bound antibody, the B cell receptor. And once this B cell receptor is recognizing its specific antigen, it also will undergo a process called clonal expansion. It will proliferate and differentiate in a effector cell. And for the B cell, the effector cell is a so-called plasma cell, because a plasma cell is a cell that will secrete the antibody. And the antibody will then help to remove the pathogen. So in contrast to the T cell, which we considered as a picky cell, the B cell is actually a pretty humble cell. There is not the specific packaging necessary. Antigen 
doesn't have to be presented in a specific way to the B-cell. The B-cell is willing to take anything, and it even takes up the antigen. This concludes the video on the cells of the adaptive immune system.